Welcome back, guys. Episode 12 of Wakeboard Wednesday. My name is Rodrigo. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. If you find it helpful, or if there's any questions we don't answer for you during the course of the video, let us know and uh, happy to jump back into the comments or film a follow-up video to address anything you might have uh, specific questions about. So, today, what are we talking about? We are talking about flood zones. So, right now, obviously it's been raining a lot uh, over the last week, two weeks here in the Asheville area, and it's very obvious where there's flooding issues potentially now because of the way the water's risen. But if you didn't know or if it hadn't been raining for a while, if you're looking at you know, buying a property or if you're thinking about selling a property, this is something that you need to be aware of even though it might not be a big or major issue for a lot of people. Uh, the flood zones happen here in a lot of areas that are very obvious and then I've also run into it at times when I'm incredibly surprised when I have something that's, uh, that's a flood zone. It's like, I don't even see any water around here. I don't even know if there's a river around here, and yet it's in a flood zone. And uh, so I kind of just want to talk through that really quickly, give you an idea of like, what to do and how to do some research on your own so you can figure things out and, and kind of jump through some of these hoops by yourself before you have to call anybody or you know, spend any money on doing research as far as the flood zone. So we're going to do three things today really quickly is just say, how do you check for a flood zone, what the implications are, and then what you should do if you are in a flood zone. So move through these really quickly. So how do you check? So there's, there's two different ways you can do this. Uh, you can either go on to the GIS system for Buncombe County. or Henderson County for that matter. Or you can go to the FEMA website. Both of these websites kind of are one of those like where they're not super simple to share verbally. So we'll put the links to both of those websites in the comment below after this video. And what you do is you go in there to GIS from Buncombe, just in case, Henderson, or whatever county that you're at forgetting all my last letters today. But uh, so the end, uh, any county that you're in is gonna have a GIS system, at least I know for Buncombe and Henderson County, on those systems you can double check to see if it's in a floodplain. You'll go into there, put your address in, and uh, for FEMA, it'll tell you right away if you're in a floodplain. And then for the GIS, you kind of have to go to the right-hand side of the screen for Buncombe County uh, and open up the keys, and it's a layer on the map. And there's different, types of floodplain as far as like the 100 year and, or a floodway, etc. And that's important because if you are in a floodplain, the biggest thing you have to think about next is insurance. So insurance costs can go up and are typically somewhat substantial. I know that in the last few years we have been part of some deals where the fact that it's in a floodplain have caused for the buyer on a property that we were selling to ask for a price reduction because of the cost of their insurance premiums because the house was in a floodplain. Even if it's been a house that hasn't been affected by floods in you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, etc. As long as it's in a floodplain, most, uh, you know, you're typically gonna have flood insurance and if you're gonna have flood insurance, especially here in the mountains, it's going to be uh, a little bit more than your normal premium. So you want to check that. And while we're on that topic of insurance, make sure you understand what the ins and outs and what the variables are on your policy as far as, you know, what it actually covers or what it doesn't cover. Uh, I've always heard that it's good practice if you are on a floodplain that you decide like at a basic minimum value. So, hey, anything we buy that's hundred dollars or more we're going to keep track of and make sure that you can document what the actual value of it is so if you do have a flood you have a way to substantiate your claim service and you know have proof of what your loss is and then the third thing is what if it's just raw land so we'll just talk about either really quickly either building or you know if you're moving in a mobile home
you can you can build in a floodplain. You can also move mobile homes into a floodplain. Um, don't have a ton of experience on this, but the experience that I have had on this personally is that we what we have to do is we have to get a, a, a floodplain a survey to show what the water levels would be if it flooded, and then this was for me in the county, and then we would have to build. I think it was three feet above what the flood uh, what the water would be according to the surveyor. So uh, it's more hoops to jump through. It's possible. But that's why you see some places that are, you know, you make sense that they're in a floodplain. You'll see that they have like pulling garages below the houses and the houses aren't stilts. And that's what they do is to make sure that all the living square footage is up and above and out of the flood zone area. So just a couple of things to consider. Most importantly, I want to make sure you guys have the links so you can do this research on your own. And that way when you're having those questions, you have a little bit of frame of reference. So if this was helpful, you know, let us know, give us, shoot us a thumbs up, say thank you, good job, etc., and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, you guys, appreciate you tuning in. Whiteboard Wednesday, number 12. See you next week.